Well, let me briefly introduce a person who worked harder than anybody I know in the Santa Clara Valley to try to get Proposition 15 passed. That is the Clean Publicly Funded Elections Act in the primary just a few months ago. His name is Craig Dunkerley. Here he is. Thanks a lot, Russ. Uh, I'm sensing from this crowd that there's some concern about uh, corporate and uh, special interest money in politics. Is that, am I reading this crowd correctly? I sure hope so. I, I, it's really a pleasure to be here, and, and uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, it, it's, it's really heartwarming that, uh, that Move On, uh, a, a, a very grassroots, obviously, organization that's been around for a number of years, uh, that, that, that they're, they're really uh, coming on board with supporting public financing of campaigns. Uh, we've, we've spent uh, a, a number of years doing our best to uh, persuade the Move On members, myself included, uh, that uh, pretty much the rest of our uh, uh, public interest agenda is being held hostage and is not really going to go very far until we can mitigate and, and, and neutralize the influence of private money in politics. Uh, the, the, uh, the, and the influence is pervasive. Uh, and unfortunately, with the, uh, the Supreme Court Citizens United uh, ruling here a few months ago, uh, it's gotten worse. Uh, it, 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 hard to imagine that it could get worse, but, but it did. Uh, the, the, the key thing about the Citizens United case, just so you know, uh, is that now corporations, uh, according to that ruling, will now be allowed to spend as much money as they want directly from their corporate treasury. To, uh, they, they could spend this money on independent expenditures. Uh, it, it, they still can't give the money directly to candidates. Uh, only corporate executives, employees, and shareholders can do that as natural persons. Uh, but the fact that they can now dip into their corporate treasury and spend that money is huge. Uh, and and it, it, our democracy, if it wasn't already at risk, is really at risk now. So what, what can we do about it? Uh, one of the key things that we can do is shift from corporate and special interest funded elections, which is what we have now, to publicly funded elections. Uh, who is our government uh, and, and our elected representatives designed to represent? Who is it supposed to be representing? The other 98% of us. Who are they forced to court and go to to get the money to fund their extremely expensive campaigns? The other 2%. You know, so in, in fairness, you know, in, in, in the last several years, uh, I've, I've done my share of lobbying in Sacramento and, and other places, and I have to say uh, I'm actually quite impressed with, with most of our elected officials. Uh, they're really hard-working people. Uh, they, they, they go to Sacramento, they go to Washington. Uh, the vast majority of them want to do something, they want to make a difference, and, and they, they, they want to vote their conscience, they want to do what they honestly think is in the best interest of their constituents but they quickly run up against the political realities that it, it just takes huge amounts of money to be a viable candidate. If you wanted to run for office right now and you could, uh, you could sit down with a political consultant, the first thing they would ask you is not, uh, what solutions do you have? What ideas do you have? What's your political philosophy? What would you do if you got in the off into office? The first question they're gonna ask you is how much money can you raise? Or how much money do you already have? As Walter Cronkite said a few years ago here in San Jose at a, at a Commonwealth Club uh, uh, luncheon, uh, this is no way to run a democracy. Uh, we've got, we, we need to get our elected officials out of the fundraising game. Uh, as was just recently mentioned, uh, you know, you, uh, a candidate running for office probably spends more than half of their time dialing for dollars or looking for, uh, for money to fund their campaign. They're not, I always thought they were out talking to voters and uh, you know, doing, doing speeches at, at various uh, 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 gatherings of, of voters in different areas. The truth is they spend most of their time trying to raise money. Uh, it was also mentioned that the, the, the media, you know, if we had uh, free or nominally priced airtime available to reduce the expense of uh, candidates getting their message out, uh, this would be uh, hugely beneficial to democracy. You know why we don't have that? Because the media is yet another extremely uh, uh, well-financed lobby in Washington, and they make sure that their airtime does not get given away and that their airtime does not get made available 
to candidates uh, for that public service reason. So there, there's all kinds of things. I mean, we can talk about global warming legislation. We can talk about health care reform. We can talk about the, the so-called financial reform of Wall Street that we just went through. Every time you turn around, I mean, I, I, I watch the news every night, and every, every couple of minutes when they're describing, you know, the latest uh, gridlock or the latest problem or the latest thing to, to be stumping our elected officials, invariably it comes back to the same thing. There's some big, powerful, very well-financed lobby that's blocking that and it's making it impossible for it to get through. The, the bottom line is this, it doesn't have to be this way. Arizona and Maine, for example, uh, figured this out over 10 years ago and they've had fully publicly financed elections since 1996 and 1998, respectively. It's a very simple system. Uh, we can either have corporate and special interest funded elections or we can have publicly funded elections. If we have the system we have now where, where private money uh, has the incredible influence that it has, our elected officials, whether they want to or not, uh, the, if they're not completely beholden to, the, to these financial uh, sources, they at least have to be very careful how they vote. They have to be very careful what they say. Uh, they cannot afford to offend or, or buck you know, the, these financial interests and, and now that the Supreme Court has said that you know, these corporations can spend all the money they want, it's even worse. So uh, I don't want to kid you, this is not going to be an easy battle, but it is a winnable battle. Uh, we've got great examples in Arizona and Maine. Connecticut has also come on board. Several other states have uh, partial public financing of elections. Uh, the basic idea is simple. Uh, we as the citizenry make available a, an impartial public fund Candidates have to qualify to receive that funding. We don't want every Tom, Dick, and Harriet running for office just because they think it would be fun if you and I are paying for it. So they have to qualify for those funds. Uh, but they, they do that by pledging to not accept any private money from any other source. They do that by agreeing to spending only the money that they're provided uh, from the public fund. Uh, and they do that by demonstrating that they've got broad grassroots support for their candidacy. Uh, usually the, the most common mechanism for them to demonstrate that is that they have to go out among their own constituents and gather a certain number of signatures and small donations. They don't actually keep the small donations, typically they're $5, uh, but the, all that money goes into the pot to help fund the program. Uh, the, the, the main thing that they're doing when they collect that money is they're demonstrating that they've got broad grassroots support for their candidacy. So it's not a new idea, we already know it works. And now we've got a, a really good chance of, of drawing attention to this issue uh, it, at the federal level. The Fair Elections Now Act, it's uh, HR 1826, uh, is, is, it's, it's been in Congress for a number of years. Uh, fortunately, we have allies there who, who keep reintroducing it each year. Uh, and, and grad, you know, it's it's a it's it's a slow kind of grinding process. You know, we we've got to we've got to raise awareness out there. Part of the reason it's 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 so good for me to see all of you guys here today is because I'm seeing that the word is getting out and people are are, are realizing they're waking up, they're realizing that an awful lot of the effort that they've been making over the last few years on all kinds of really worthy causes, we're, we're kind of beating our heads against a wall because the the, the game is stacked against us. The people we need to influence, our elected officials, are being held hostage by all this private money that, that is swamping our system. So again, it doesn't have to be this way. We know what the solution is. We've already got bills crafted in Congress to help uh, uh, establish it. Uh, we, we need to spread the word. The biggest single reason why Prop 15, which would have brought uh, just a, a small pilot program of public financing to California elections a couple months ago, is because m most progressives had never even heard of it. Most progressives still don't really understand what public financing of campaigns is. We gotta fix this. So that means talking to your neighbors, it means talking to your friends, it means talking to your relatives, it means helping people connect the dots. The reason you don't get the job legislation you need and the job that you need is because big money is blocking it. Trade policies, you know, ship our, our jobs overseas because that's to the benefit of those big corporations whose money is flooding Washington. The, the reason we don't get the health care reform that we really need and that we really want and that 70% of Americans want it is because the health care industry didn't want it. And they're the ones with the money and they're the ones that are elected, that are holding our elected officials hostage. 
So uh, uh, at, at the end of the day, it, it, it's, it, it, I, I want to cut our elected officials some slack because we, the, the people, have basically put them in a very toxic environment where you know, they're, they're in an untenable position. You know, they're between a rock and a hard place. We need to let them know that we've got their back. We need to let them know that if they have the courage to step up and make these changes, and, and have our campaigns, have, have candidates have the option. It's a voluntary program. The candidate has an option of foregoing all this private money and instead funding their campaign from a neutral, impartial public fund. If we let them know we've got their backs on that, they'll do it. Let's do it.